Hey, what's up F1ers? I appreciate you checking out my channel, SK Lifestyle. This channel is primarily about action videos, travel, reviews, and now F1 talk because I love F1 and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one out there. So I plan to pretty much do this just about every week, certainly before the Grand Prix. And hopefully you guys enjoy, keep commenting, sharing, subscribing. The quicker it grows, the faster I can move it onto its own channel and just let it go exponentially from there. But with that said, there is a lot going on right now in F1 and I just want to jump right into it. So last weekend was great. Obviously Sochi, Hamilton proved a lot of the doubters wrong. I think it's just crazy the way racing goes. You know, one week it's Ferrari's done forever. Next week it's Ferrari's the best thing. Then it's, you know, where's Mercedes at? And then, oh, well, Mercedes got the pace back. Of course they got the pace. I mean, this guy, he's just a monster. And he will always take advantage of any possibility that it, possibility that he can. And he's always anticipating and prepping for it in every sense, in every situation. So I wasn't surprised that Hamilton won. I was actually planning to do a video last week and that was gonna be my guess that he was gonna take, uh, take it and he did. Now, poor Seb, honestly. I mean, the doubters for him too, especially as Leclerc just really kind of takes off with Ferrari. Um, and he really had this one kind of in the bag to me. And you know, but that's racing, that's how things go. So I won't stay too long on Sochi. That was last week, well, two weeks ago. This is this week, Suzuka, Japan. You know, it's a home race for Verstappen. You know, not as a driver, but as far as, you know, the team goes, real big for Honda. So how's that gonna kind of play out? Those sort of things. We are gonna get into a lot of this stuff and I just wanna jump into it right now. And the first thing that I wanna jump into is, yeah, winners and losers. So I haven't jotted this down. I honestly haven't thought about this at all. I'm just gonna shoot off what I think. So, who do I think is going to win in Japan? <sighs> I'm on the spot now. Uh, uh, Botas. There it is. I think Botas is going to win Japan. Um, who do I think is going to come in second? I'm going to give it to Verstappen. That's kind of just a, almost a wish because you know it's his home race for Honda and stuff. I'm a Honda fan. So I'm gonna kind of give it to him. And I think followed by, uh, um, well, Hamilton. We'll just call Hamilton. So that's how it's gonna go. And also, who do I think is gonna lose? So when I say who's gonna lose, I wanna pick, <clears throat> I wanna make it even a little tougher. Cause I mean, there could be multiple DNFs and stuff. So. I really want to pick who's going to be last place that actually finishes. So I'm going to say that's going to be Magnuson. All right. So there it is. Those are the predictions. Those are the winners and the losers. So now that we got that out of the way and be sure to comment, do you think I'm even remotely right? Am I completely off? Who are your choices? Um, and we're definitely going to see, and I'll definitely bring it back for next time that I bring this up for P1 life, who is going to be, or not who is going to be, who was right? Was I even close? Um, you know, and so forth. And I might even spice it up even a little more as the weeks go on. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, you got my predictions up there. I put it all out there. So leave your comments and questions down below. Um, you know, what do you think about my choices? Who do you think? is really gonna be on top, who do you think is gonna lose, that sort of thing. I'll definitely uh, make the call outs next uh, uh, P1 life as far as how well I did on my predictions. And I think I might even spice it up uh, as we go, uh, you know, throughout the next races and on to 2020. But with that said, I wanna talk about something else before we jump into the Japan. And I got a few other things on the list and we're gonna run through those too. Um, but I just wanted to talk about fastest lap. I find it so interesting and I've always thought it was an area for possibility um, as far as awarding a point or you know making it more interesting um, and it really has it really has because it it get like there can be races where you know it's kind of a given who's gonna take uh, p1 now who's gonna take p2 you know what I mean maybe there's not a lot of action going on as the the last few final laps uh, happen you know, there's always the, the accident that can occur or something like that. But 
for the most part, you know, sometimes the, the race can kind of slow down a bit. And this is a chance for those kind of races where especially it can spice up those last five or six laps. I don't know about you guys. Let me know what you guys think. But I get gassed up either way, whether it's a really good race or the race is kind of slowing down and you kind of already know what's going to happen. You know, when, when I hear Max go, come on, like, yo, give me everything. Let's pit. Let's do this. And you know what I mean? Because he has the chance to stay in second place and also go for the fastest lap or Magnuson. He can pull him off. He gets those purple banners all the time. And it's just cool to, to, to spice it up, to see what's really going to happen. So, of course, it really hasn't come into play as far as these points. Um, you know, really making a change in the uh, the lineup of who's on top uh, for the drivers uh, championship. But we never know. It always could happen at the end of this. Doubt it. But for 2020 or going forward, it could always it always could. So it'll be interesting once that occurs, how we kind of uh, how the conversation kind of goes or our or, or thoughts about it as you know what I mean? Like that takes place. Um, I think it's going to be pretty rare though, because you're only talking about 20 something points. So that's pretty much like replacing one person's DNF with, with one good, uh, you know, second place finish or something, which can make the difference. But that's also assuming that they took every single fastest lap throughout. So, but I mean, they could also win by, you know, eight points because they got eight fastest laps. So we'll see how that pans out. But I just wanted to talk about it real quick, bring it up as a topic. I really, I'm loving it. I'm just loving it. And hopefully you guys are too, but we'll be sure to see. Leave those comments down below. SK will always get back to you. So with that said, I just want to do something a little different. And I want to go with a way back moment and just talk about that real quick. Because I also watch old F1 races. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys out there do too. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So what do we have here? Well, as much as I like talking about the coming GP, I also like talking again about old F1 races. And I was watching this the other day. This is, if you don't recognize the picture, 2015 Belgian Grand Prix. And I was just, so obviously one of the big uh, things that happened in that race was Botas. And you can see here, he has uh, two different tires on, right? How does that happen? Even the commentator, commentators were discussing basically how they couldn't even remember a time when that happened. Obviously it's against the rules and so forth. So, you know, that's all well and good. So some guy messed up in the pit lane, put on the wrong tire, sucks for him, I'm sure he got chewed out. But what interested me more watching it again was how the stewards kind of handled the situation. So basically it's against it's against the rules. Now, is it against the rules because they think it's dangerous and or do they think it's against the rules or is it against the rules because it's a potential, um, what do you call it, advantage to the driver who may have the tires. Now, it's, a, it's not a guaranteed, but we'll say potential. I think in either case, whether dangerous or potential advantage, you'd want to get rid of that danger or advantage of that one driver before anything else but if you watch the race what they did was they made him come in and serve his penalty in the pit lane and i believe it was a drive through um or maybe he stopped i honestly can't remember off the top of my head at the moment but he went and served his penalty and then went back around and then came and pitted to change his tires out and i just found that interesting i think what probably happened even more was that that it happened he went around for a couple laps like that and it wasn't called out so i feel like maybe the stewards were just like oh well they got to save face and they were just like serve the penalty right away because then it, it you know it immediately shows like that they were taking action and they were like all right now fix it or something like that i just found it to be a very odd situation um again what do you guys think about this i mean it's Again, I'm throwing something way out of left field at you guys. You're probably just thinking about Japan. You're probably just thinking about Sochi. Um, but I'm going to be doing this on every P1 life. You know, a quick way back moment. And with that way back moment, I can't forget. Poor Seb. I mean, come on. He was just going to run away with this thing. And then out of there. And I really wanted to bring it up too 
just because we're talking about the same GP race and he, uh, you know, it had to do with tires. So basically I couldn't, I couldn't talk about Botas and then not bring this up at the same time. So you get two little way back moments in one from the same race. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. Not as much controversy or, or kind of questioning the situation um, uh, out of intrigue or interest. Just poor Seb and his Ferrari, man. That, they just, and he called it too. He, he, he said, should we pit again? And they just, no, let's go for it. And you know, that's racing. So with that said, let's move on to Japan. Ah, good old Max. Yeah, so like I said, this is kind of a coming home, especially for Honda doing so well this season. You know they are looking for a big result. And it's funny that um, the three that I kind of just threw out there and chose to win and come second and third were also on the podium last year. So that would be really crazy if we get the same kind of result. Obviously, the way I had it was a little shifted from last year was Lewis... Botas and then Verstappen. Um, so we already can see that obviously we know Verstappen has what it takes to win races, to get definitely get on the podium, and certainly he can uh, bring it home for Honda, for Red Bull to, uh, this weekend, and we'll see if he does it. You know what I mean? I, I, the past few races, same thing. Past few races for, for uh, Red Bull haven't been... Uh, ecstatic haven't been uh you know what i mean like top of the line and so you're starting to see those questions just like everything else you know wh what's kind of happening in the red bull are they falling off a little you know what's up but max is max he's gonna do his thing shout out to alban he's you know he's really been coming up i wasn't sure he's the third one after a couple other guys and it's just like man what you know should they have they well ricardo did his own thing but like I don't know so you know with Alban coming up it was like ah what's gonna happen but you know he's definitely showing pace he's definitely learning the car and uh, he's doing his thing so I wouldn't be surprised to see him way close to the podium as well especially wanting to do well for Honda so it'll be interesting to see what happens it's gonna be a very good race I'll throw up the map right now all right so here we go so I mean I, I like this. I like this uh, uh, circuit. You know, there's definitely uh, uh, some good places for some high speed. Um, it, it's just to me, you got some good spots for some good overtaking, and I'm really interested to see, you know, what these cars can do. I really think Ferrari is still going to be a problem, even though I didn't put them on the podium. So I think they're going to be a problem. They might prove me wrong uh, in my quick prediction for sure. I definitely can see them. Having some good race pace, which which they have. I mean, look at Vettel last week. You know what I mean? Um, it's just th there's no doubt. So they're going to be giving some people some problems. But I think as we come into the closing of the season, it's going to be turned up a lot for everybody. Um, so we'll really see what happens. I'm eager to see how qualifying goes tomorrow. Um, that should definitely say a lot. I wanted to give my predictions before qualifying even happens because it's a lot easier when you start seeing people who's on pole and so forth. And uh, yeah, I'll say who's going to get on pole because I should have made that part of one of my predictions. I'm going to go Vettel. I, I think he I think he wants it bad. I, I think he still wants to. Of course he does. You know, it's sad. But I, I think he might be able to pull it off. Um, yeah, I, I don't always want to just go with the easiest thing. You know, um, Charles has been getting polls consistently, so you know it's easy to say Charles, and he probably will. But you know, I'm just I'm gonna say sad. But hey, prove me wrong. Leave your comments down below. You know, this weekend we'll put everything on the line and we'll see. It. So you know, I I might have to you know walk my sorry ass back in here next time and just say I was completely off. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, with this whole prediction thing, I definitely have some ideas to make it more spiced up. So we'll see if you have any ideas of your own or how I can spice it up. Let me know as well. All right, so that's it. First episode of P1 Life down in the record book. So I appreciate you guys joining me and checking out my channel. As soon as this really picks up again, I will be spawning this off onto its own channel. And uh, yeah, I will be doing many great things like I do for my own channel as far as giveaways and that sort of thing. And I also just, I love 
Formula One and I love to have people to talk with and discuss it and just talk about old topics, new topics, everything. So hopefully you're the same way. Hopefully this is exciting to you and I appreciate your support and subscribing and watching and I will see you guys next time. SK Lifestyle, appreciate you watching. All right, take two. So yeah, it's been great. This first epic. <laughs> so this has been great. First episode. <laughs> so it's been great. First episode of P1 Life. I appreciate you guys tuning in, joining me, SK, on SK Lifestyle.